Hello everyone, welcome back to the Wisconsin Greg Show. I'm here in Whitewater, Wisconsin. Uh, keep finding new stuff on the internet. Um, I seem to keep finding interesting that I've never seen before. So I thought I'd share it with you. I'm not sure if there's going to be a whole lot to see here or not, but um, we'll give her a try. So let me turn this camera around here and I'll show you where I'm at. This is right in a subdivision in Whitewater. Um, and uh, I've seen the sign before, but I just did, I thought it had something to do with the subdivision. I didn't even really know there was an actual burial ground here uh, for an old uh, ancient burial and religious site, I guess they call it, for Native American people here. So um, from what I understand, though, it's kind of hard to see because um, uh, uh, they don't mow the grass actually in where the grounds are, where the, where the burial sites are and stuff. So anyways I think they're back in here and we're gonna go back here and check it out um, I didn't even know what effigy burial sites were I had to look it up um, they kind of make them into different shapes of can be in shapes of animals and people um, a lot of times it seems like they're in shapes of like say like turtles and birds and stuff like that and they bury bury the people are the people are buried underneath those um, shapes uh, the the dirt is formed in that shape and I guess it's a way of memory to memorize them kind of like we use gravestones they used to use shapes of birds and animals and sometimes they made the shape of the person and stuff sometimes more than one person is buried under one site I guess before they started doing this from what I understand is they used to just use a silo shape uh, just a round shape 10 15 feet across with a dome on top and they'd bury them under that And then they started doing this I guess that's my understanding anyways. I'm no expert on this I'm just learning about this myself. So this is all new to me Pretty interesting though This is about probably 12 13 miles maybe 14 miles from my house It's on the uh, west it's kind of a west side of Whitewater, I would call it. See what the sign says over here. You got a map that shows it all where they're buried and stuff. Get back here so you can see it. I'll leave this on here for a few minutes so you have a chance to read it. Almost 2,000 years old. That's interesting. No pets allowed. Let's see what this is. It's pretty windy and out in the open, but back in here it's not bad. I think it's starting to work, it's trying to work up a storm. I didn't look at the weather, but it seems like it's gonna rain.
Not sure how far back we have to actually go. I think they're actually marked each one of them. So I don't think it's in this area. Because I don't see no markers yet. It's amazing with the internet how I keep finding stuff that I've lived in this area my whole life and I ain't never been back in here. It's a good thing. History is a good thing to know. Everybody should study their history. If you don't know what happened in history, history will repeat itself. But if you know what happens, you can prevent it from repeating itself, especially if it's something bad. I seen on another video, they said some of these trees were really, really old. I can't remember. I thought they said around 100 and, 100 and some years old, 150, 100 and something years old, they, they estimated. Oh, here we go. See a sign up here coming up. Number 15, Mink Mound. The readings are kind of hard to, to read here. So well, this is the mink mound, but I don't know exactly. It's just, so you can't really see it because of all the brush and stuff growing up. Huh. Well, anyways, there's an Indian burial mound there. They call it the mink mound right in that area right in there. Continue going around here. Another marker up here. Kind of interesting how they're all in the same area. Kind of like where our cemeteries are nowadays. Back then I would have think they would have just kind of buried them wherever they passed away. Except for maybe this is where they stayed, I'm not sure. Okay, so hopefully you can read this. I should probably be reading this out to you. I think I got it so you can read it. So I'll move on.
Huh. Now it gets tricky. Looks like it goes this way. I don't know. Let me go back and look at that map. I don't know. I'm going to go back to the first one and start over again and go the other direction. Because that was number 14. Well, that's number 15, so guessing we gotta go this way to hit hit number one and get started. I wish I had a map I could carry with me. But the pathways ain't really marked out real well neither. This I can't even read, it's so faded and stuff. This is site three, conical mound number one. I'm guessing it's over here. It is very hard to tell with all the undergrowth that's growing around here.
the house right up here. It's gonna be kind of weird having a Indian burial ground right behind your house. My question is, where did they get the dirt to make the burial grounds? And how did they get it here back then, 2,000 years ago? Because some of these look like they're huge, or by the measurements that they give. I might have to do some more studying on this. This is kind of interesting. I'm sure some of my YouTube peeps will know and fill me in. Here's site number five. This is a conical type. Both the conical and linear type mounds are the oldest mounds built. The simple shapes were made easily without lots of planning. These simple mounds are, do hold some surprises when connected by celestial lines. Many mount groups display hidden meaning of value. This could have been a Surprise on a certain day of the year commemor commemoration of the birth or death um, of a clan member or it could indicate whether the direction of the annual seasonal movement of the clan or tribe. We don't know for sure at this time it says conical or lineal mounds were built during the period of this time that started before the birth of Christ, 200 to 300 BC, and continued to about, I can't read the years, so many hundred years ago. Can't read it, it's, it's wore off. Effigy mounds begin being built about 1,000 years ago, I think it says, it's hard to read, and stopped being built the same time as the other types. The conical mound is also the tallest in the mound group. The mound had an estimated 35 feet in 1920, but then in a survey in 1989 it was I can't read it. Looks I can't read it. It's four out, so it must have shrunk too. But originally in 1920, it measured 38 feet in diameter. So I'm guessing that's this one right here. Kind of, you can kind of see it's how the plants are domed. I'm guessing it's in that area right there. So that's kind of interesting. Let's keep going on and see what we can see. I wish these placards were better shaped so you could read them better. Hopefully they'll fix this up a little better someday. I hate to see history be lost. Oh, this is a pretty big area back in here.
This is site number eight, mound number two. This is not an official mound site, but it was found by the Johns Jazz Stakel survey in 1989. Archaeology studies of the possible mound site have been not been done. Because of the agricultural destruction it may of many mound sites across the state of Wisconsin, Illinois, and Iowa, we may never know with certainty if this was a mound. Because of because this was part of Charles Brown's site twelve, a neighboring mound that has been so badly disturbed that its original shape cannot be seen. Huh. I'm not sure where that is exactly. It's somewhere over in here, I'm guessing. We'll continue on, see what else we can find. When I was a little kid, my dad always said there was Indian mounds in the back of our woods at the time. And I always thought he was joking, but maybe he was serious. <laughs> I don't know. See a pathway, I'm not sure if I'm on the right path or if this is an animal path. I'm not sure if I walked by here already or not. Yeah, I think I did. Huh. Well, maybe not. Let's go see.
They definitely could use some markers for the trail because you can't tell where the trail is very well some some spots. I think I've already been down here, but let's see. No, I haven't seen this one yet. Very hard to read again. This is another effigy mound believed to be shaped the shape of a turtle. To the Native American people, the turtle was a strong symbol. The turtle's shell was hard like armor and it could be and it could swim very well. One story told a great flood which, it, which the people were suffering as the tribe climbed to higher ground. To escape the raising water, it became dark. Sometime during the middle of the night, after many hours and days of climbing, the waters stopped rising. The people fell asleep, exhausted from the ordeal. When they woke in the morning, they found that the water had not stopped rising, but in fact they had climbed onto the back of many of any immense turtle of on the back of an immense turtle. The turtle had carried the people and saved them from drowning in the flood. These mounds were sacred to the Native Americans for many reasons. They may contain burial of all types from human remains to ashes to sacred objects and treaty exchanges. The most fascinating fact is that the soil that makes up the mound is sa sacred, having been brought here to, the mount, to each mound. The soil was carried here in baskets or blankets from other sacred places. Since domesticated horses weren't introduced to the con continent until 1500, the soil was carried by hand. Wow. Turtle Mound is now measured at 95 feet long and 25 feet wide, but 1920, when it was a survey done back then, it was 20. Um, tall, the body was 25 foot tall, 100, 100 foot legs, 21 foot legs and 21 foot and 22 feet, head at 20, head at 18 inches or 18 feet and the body width at 25 feet. So this is the turtle mound, I guess. Does kind of look like a turtle, I guess. A big turtle. See if I can back up so you can see this. Let's kind of go over it here. That's interesting. There's another sign back here. I'm going to see if... I don't know if I've seen that one yet or not. I don't think so. It's kind of hard. I zigzag and stuff around here. Hard to follow and the paths are hard to follow.
This is site number 10, bird mound number 2. More commonly called the eagle or thunderbird mount. The eagle is the most powerful and largest raptor of carnivorous bird or carnivorous bird in the area. The eagle is considered the eyes the the great spirit. These are very hard to read. It is welcome presence of Native American gatherings. The story told is how the eagle saved people from themselves. The great spirit wasn't happy with the people. They were acting in ways that weren't respectful to him or other people and animals around them. He was so angry that he was going to to do away with the people for the for their behavior, but the people were spread by the actions of the eagle were spared by the actions of the eagle. The eagle stood up in front of the great spirit and told him of the people who were respectful and honored the old ways. The great spirit commanded commanded the great spirit commanded the eagle to fly around the world in the light just before dawn to find someone who is honoring the great spirit in the old way and if the eagle found some the great spirit would allow the sun to rise this is one reason in native american gatherings they perform at sunrise ceremony they perform a sunrise ceremony. These stories were passed on for generations of children. The mounds have been a place to bury, join clans, give directions, and educate. In 1920, the bird mound was, the body was 37 feet. The head was 23 feet. The wings were 94 feet, um, but damaged. Um, oh, the left was 94 feet. It looks like the right one was damaged. It was 50 feet. In 89, head to tail, 57 feet. Left wing was 82 feet, and the right wing is gone, the way it, I understand it. So right in here, I guess, would be where the bird, the bird mount site is. Can't really tell. Just a little bit of a rise in the ground. Don't know where, what spot is what spot. Okay. Let's go back the other way and uh, see what's there. See, I seen another placard down that way, and see. I don't think I've been to that one yet. Nope, I've already been to this one. So, I don't know how many there is all together here. Let's see. Can't remember. I'm sure I'm missing a quite a few, but they're really hard to find in here. I'll walk around a little more and see if I can find something that I haven't seen. Maybe some of the placards are gone too, who knows.
you can see it's a pretty wide area I don't know if you can see way over there holding the camera up so you can see across pretty big area back here I think I've been here already yep this is a conical mound I think I've been here already oh Let's take a look here and see where I can go. I don't think I've been to this one yet. Three. I don't know if I've been to this one or not. I think I have. Site three, conical mound one. I think I've already been there. Can you believe I'm 57 years old and lived in this area my whole life and never been back in here before? I don't think my parents knew about this. I don't remember them ever saying anything about this. It's amazing what the internet can tell you nowadays. Whether it's true or not, who knows? But this has evidently been studied, so it sounds like it's been true or been found out to be ac actual, actually the real thing. But as we all know, you can't never always believe everything on the internet. You got to kind of use your own judgment and do your investigations. I don't think I've been down this path. But we'll see. Look at this tree. I'll show you this tree. It's pretty cool looking. That is an old tree.
I've already seen this one. This is the mink mound. Well, I think I've seen them all pretty much. Let's take a quick peek up here. Pathway going that way. I've been down there already. See what's down here if there's anything. Nope, I don't see no more markers up here. I'm going to go back the other way and check one more spot. I don't know if I've been down this way or not. After a while they all kind of start looking the same, these pathways. I think this is my way out. Yep. Just looking off to my left to see if there's any paths in this area. I don't see any going through this area. Well, I think that's going to be about it. Well, I guess I'm going to end this video. And let me turn this uh, camera around so I can say goodbye to you. Well, thanks everybody for coming along with me. So I'm not by myself out here in this... Uh, burial grounds <laughs> you know Halloween is coming up too but anyways uh, all went well and uh, I'm sure I probably missed some but I couldn't really see them um, it's very hard to very hard to see some of the stuff with all the brush growing up around here and the weeds and stuff so anyways I hope you enjoyed what I just showed you I did I didn't even know this was here um, so anyways, find it pretty interesting, and I'm going to let you go. I'm going to make one more video, hopefully, today, and uh, I guess I could give you a little bit of a clue what it's about. If, if it turns out, I don't like to give clues or lead anybody on, because once in a while I make a video and it doesn't turn out. But if it does, 
it's got something to do with uh, let's just say water tower and witches <laughs> so that'll be another little kind of interesting one for you so hopefully that turns out so anyways we'll catch you on the next video have a great day everyone and we'll see you later bye now